Howdy folks, Dave here at Thunder Mesa Studio, where I'm starting in on another project for the Gruesome Gulch layout. Since the very beginning, I've envisioned an old banded mine up here next to Skull Butte. Something like a mine gives both the town and the railroad a reason to be here. It kind of fleshes out the story so it's not just a random ghost town out in the middle of the desert. What I have in mind is something small and rather caricatured, uh, similar to the other structures here in the gulch, uh, but with a mine shaft that'll go down and tie everything together with the caverns. So come along with me now as we design and build the Heldorado Mine for Gruesome Gulch. Like all of my builds, uh, this one is going to start with a drawing. And, you know, a lot of times I'll do that drawing uh, in a software program, do it digitally in something like Adobe Illustrator or Photoshop, something like that. But this time I, I'm going to go back to good old analog. We're going to use some uh, blue line graph paper, a ruler, and uh, a pencil to get started on this. So it looks like we're going to have a head frame that's about 28 feet wide at the base and then a little over 20 feet tall. I'm going to use this drawing as a template to work from. I'm probably going to build the, uh, the head frame right on top of this. So I'm going to go ahead and ink it in so I can see the lines a little bit better. Great advantage of having a full-size drawing like this to work from is that it tells you right there um, exactly how much lumber you need and the sizes and even the angles that they need to be cut by. So I'm going to gather up all of this scale lumber and pre-cut and pre-stain everything so we can jump right into construction. This set of parts here that I'm using to build the, uh, the hoist shack that goes at the back of the mine might look a little familiar to you if you watched my uh, build video on the blackjack mine which I did for the, uh, the Bandit Canyon Railway project. Uh, it's exactly the same set of parts. Um, in fact, these go back all the way to the Big Thunder Dynamite Shack, which I built for the Thunder Mesa layout. I've distressed and cut all of the lumber that I think I'm going to need, at least to get started, but I've decided that I want the shack itself to be about a scale foot narrower than it is. So I'm just cutting out one of these boards and then just gluing it back together. These pieces are cut from some um, 1 16th of an inch thick basswood plywood which is a great material to work with. To stain all these pieces I'm using the same two-step process that I used over on the Dead Eye Saloon because I want that same kind of dark brownish gray patina that you see on old buildings in the desert. And the first step is to go over it with a, um, this is a Minwax Early American wood stain marker. Then once that's had a chance to dry, go back over everything again with my uh, India ink and 70% isopropyl alcohol stain. Now I can finish setting up my drawing as a jig. I've uh, glued a, another piece of foam core down here to act as a stop. Now I'm using some clear packaging tape, laying it right over the top of the drawing so that when I glue the pieces together, they won't stick to the paper. I'm going to notch this upright just a little bit so that this diagonal piece will lock in. Just cut down just a little bit and take your hobby knife and a flat file. And to assemble this, I'm just using some uh, good old yellow carpenter's glue. Position this upright piece first. I'll use some dress pins. Push down into the foam core to keep it in position. Line it up right on top of the drawing. I'll set this aside for a minute, let that dry, and I'm going to go ahead and assemble the hoist check. Now 
Now I've lifted this up just a little bit. I've got it propped up with a piece of 4x6. So I can put this piece in on the other side behind it. So I've got one side done and I'm ready to build the opposite side. But the challenge here is that it needs to be a mirror image. So how do we do that? Well, first of all, um, since these this is 12 by 12 and these are 8 by 8s, this is four scale inches wider. So if I build it flat like I did that one, this will actually be positioned in the wrong place. So the solution is to take a piece of uh, four inch wide stock, this is some four by six, and lay it underneath here like so. And then we put these pieces on top. And that should position it in the right spot relative to the bottom beam. And then we just put the cross braces in the, on the opposite side of where I put them on that one. And you've got your mirror image. Now to put these two sides together, I've decided to do a little cheat. I've created a base out of some chipboard, which is the same uh, dimensions as the uh, footprint of the head frame with the uh, 12 by 12 cross pieces in. Now I just need to glue this side in. This just makes uh, everything a little bit easier. Keeps everything positioned properly, the right distance apart. And then when it's installed uh, on the layout, um, it, you know, all of this will be covered in ground cover, so you won't see the cardboard at all. And I've got another piece of 8x8. Eight eight. Goes in between here. Tie these two uprights together. Now I'm adding a pair of angled 2x6 braces that come down like so. And then I've got a 4x6 that slips under here on each side. Goes all the way across. And then the top beam, which is another piece of 8x8. Now I'm just building up around the mine opening with some cribbing. There's some 8x8s overlapping at the corners. Now I've got this propped up because I need to add these two diagonal braces. One here and one right there. And finally, got a pair of 8x8 supports here for the sheave wheel. And I want those about a scale five or six inches apart, so that looks pretty good. Now I'm assembling the sheave wheel, and I'm going to build it all as one unit, sliding the pillow block on here to the other end of this piece of brass wire. That way I can paint the whole thing and at once and install it all at once. Now I'm going around and drilling some holes and adding some uh, nut bolt washer castings in likely locations. This little brace needs a couple. Just put those in there with a dab of CA on the end. Back here where the shack's going to be, you won't actually be able to see any truss rods, so I'm not going to bother to actually model them. But up in the front, they would be visible, so... Got some music wire and I've drilled the holes all the way through. There. Now just cap it at each end with one of those uh, square nut bolt washer castings. Now I want to create some iron straps that will wrap around this top beam here. Just an extra reinforcement. So I'm going to use some Bristol board. I've cut it to about a scale six inches wide. I'm going to paint it that uh, dark brown. Now I've drilled some holes and added nut bolt washer castings on both sides. I want this, this wheel to look good and rusty. So I'm going to kind of dry brush on some uh, burnt sienna and orange. Now I can just snip this right off the wire. And glue it into place with a little bit of CA, I think. Now I want to do a little bit of work on the shack. 
just finished building the window and painting in it. It was a dark brown and I dry brushed it with some lighter browns and grays to better match the wall. Now I'm uh, got some acetate glazing and I'm just breaking the window. I'm just applying a little bit of zap canopy glue. This stuff to the back of the frame. I want this window to be so dirty that you can't see through it. So first step is going to be go over the back with some uh, Rust-Oleum matte finish. Give it a little bit of tooth. And some dirty gray colored chalks on the back. And we'll spray it again. I think that'll work. Now I can trim it out with some 1x4s. Now I can trim the door side in just the same way. And I'll add a Z brace to the door just, just because I like the way they look. Well, now I can put the two parts of this thing together, glue the shack in. I just want to add a piece of 8 by 8 as the ridge beam for the roof. For my winch cable, I'm going to use some uh, number 10 crochet thread, but I'm coloring it with a brown sharpie, which will give it a nice rusty look. And I can thread this through the sheave down into the structure. I cut a hole in the bottom that I can run this down through. I'll just put a little dab of CA on the wheel. I'll put this over on its side and use just a little bit of CA and a little square of gaffer's tape to hold that in place. And I want it to look like the cable has snapped and is just hanging loose. So I'm painting it with some diluted white glue. So this crochet thread will stiffen and hang straight down. I just want to fray the end a little bit. For the roof, I've cut a couple of uh, chipboard panels and temporarily taped those together to make sure they fit the way I want them to on the structure. Also painted it uh, dark brown underneath. And now I've got some, um, some plastruct corrugated roofing material. And I'm cutting this into a three foot wide strip. And I'll take and cut these into probably eight foot long, so three by eight. All right, I've got nine panels, and that's going to be more than enough. Go ahead and get some gray primer on these, and we can get this roof finished. And while the primer dries on those panels, I'll get a couple other bits of business done. I want to make a, uh, a smokestack coming out from the steam engine that is presumably inside of this little shack. And for that I've got a piece of straw. This is from a juice box and a bamboo skewer. I've cut the angle here at the bottom to match the slope of the roof. And I'm going to put this bamboo skewer inside. I'm going to pot it in with some cyanoacrylate. Now I'll get some paint on this. Now I'm using some 2x6 to frame in this hole, this opening where the uh, hoist cable comes through the roof. Now I can glue this side of the roof on. I do want to have a light inside of the building. Um, just a lone yellow flickering LED. That's what this is, a three millimeter flickering LED. And so the, about the only place I can put it where it won't be visible, you know, through the windows or through cracks around the door or something is up here under this, under the roof. So I'm using some 3M foam tape. This is the industrial strength variety. I'm gonna bend that down a little bit. Put some black gaffer's tape over the top to secure it even more. And 
Now I can just finish trimming out the rest of the roof with some more 2x6. To finish up the paint job on these corrugated panels, I've got some uh, orange and some burnt sienna acrylic paint. And I'm just going to take a little piece of, uh, this is just regular yellow kitchen sponge, and go over each one. And the sponge gives you a nice random pattern. And I'll just continue to go over each one of these until I get it the way I want it. So to apply these uh, corrugated panels, I'm just brushing some Eileen's tacky glue on the back. Over here where the smoke jack comes out, I cut a hole right through here. And I just uh, colored that black with a black Sharpie. So when I put this over the top, it will look like flashing showing through underneath. Now for this next row, I've got to cut the sheets in half. So they're basically four by three feet. But you see what happens, it shows this uh, white plastic when you do that. But a real simple solution is to go over it with a brown Sharpie, just like that. And I can go ahead and put the stack in too while I'm working over on this side. All right, I think we got the roof for now. And if you've been waiting for a sign, this is it. <laughs> It's time to add a little signage to the building. I, uh, as usual, created this graphic in uh, Adobe Photoshop using some CG wood textures that I downloaded from the internet to make it look like a wooden sign. And use several different uh, techniques, filters. One of these days I'm going to do, uh, soon, I'm going to do a video on um, how I create these signs in Photoshop because usually you guys just see the uh, the tail end of the process when I'm putting it on the building. So I will spray some glue on the back of this and then we'll laminate it to this little piece of Bristol board. And we'll glue this one to the back of that one. Now I'll use my watercolors and paint the edges a warm gray so it looks like wood. Now I'm going to mount this on a piece of 2x6 and this one is going to be right up here on top of the head frame. And with that the structure is basically done but it's going to need a lot more weathering before I put it on the layout. Nothing says abandoned old building like boarded up windows. So the first thing I want to do is put some 2x6 across this window here, like it's been boarded over. I'll break one of these. Add some nail holes. And I think I want to break one of these diagonal supports. And there would almost certainly be boards across an open mine shaft like this to keep unsuspecting folks from falling in. Just using some old coffee stir sticks for this. There, that tells a little story. And over here I want it to look like uh, the door maybe was boarded up. But something has gotten in. Well, now I want to gray this down a little bit, uh, like dirt and grime has splashed up onto the building over the years. And this is, this is advanced. You might not want to do this with your models, but I've done it before. So I think I can get away with it. This is some Rust-Oleum aged gray. And I'm not going to spray it at the model. I'm going to spray it around the model. So it just comes up onto the bottom. And of course you can do this very effectively with an airbrush as well. Now it's time for some chocks. I'm going to start up here on the roof, work my way down and around, start off with some rust colors, some orange and terracotta. Gray 
great thing about chocks is they go right where you need them when you're doing corrugated like this. It goes right down into those grooves where the rust would be. And I'm also doing this to dull the shine. The acrylic paint tends to have a little bit of, even when it says matte, it's still going to have a little bit of a shine to it. I'm going to go over all of the metal on this, not just the roof. Throw a little black in there to darken things up. Some soot from the uh, smokestack. Some more rust here on the wheel and the winch line, hoist line. And moving right along, we'll add some dirty grays all down around the bottom. Okay, I think that's sufficiently gnarly looking. Let's get a coat of uh, clear matte finish on that. With the above ground portion of the mine essentially finished, now I want to turn my attention to the mine shaft itself, which will go down, down, down into cadaver caverns. The first step is creating a base for the mine out of some uh, one inch thick extruded polystyrene foam, the same stuff that the rest of the layout is built out of. And I'm finishing it with all the same painting techniques. Got a uh, coat of the, the scenic base coat on there. And now I'm going over it with a black wash to darken everything up back in all the cracks and crevices. Then I want to go and dry brush over all of that with some lighter shades of gray. Same way I did with the rest of the scenery. Just using some granite gray and some dark blue gray mixed together. Go over all of this. Bring out the rock texture and the highlights. Take some of this unbleached titanium and mix that in. Makes a great highlight color. Warms things up just a little bit. It's more makes it for more of a warm gray. Now I'm just spreading on a little bit of Eileen's tacky glue. I can glue this structure down to the base. Make sure the opening lines up with the mine shaft. There we go. And now I want to backfill in all around the entire structure with my usual dirt and rocks that I use all over the Gruesome Gulch layout. These are cinders black and gray mostly. Throw some bigger rocks in there, here and there. And I'll use some diluted white glue to hold all this in place. This is just regular white glue diluted three to one with water. While that ground cover dries, I want to continue to add Little bits of debris, broken pieces of wood are always good. And the fun part is that it's almost impossible to overdo piles of debris like this. <laughs> the more the better. I want to have a lot of old rusted iron too. So I've got some bits and pieces from my scrap box that I can throw in here. Old gears and pieces of machinery. All right, we'll set this aside, let the glue dry on all of this, and then I can work on the rest of the mine shaft. I've uh, cut a hunk of two inch foam for the lower part of the mine shaft. So the mine's gonna sit up here and the shaft will go down. This will lead down into the caverns and then disappear underground down there. So now I just need to texture this rock surface. Use a wire brush. I uh, cut all this out with a uh, hot wire cutter just to get the shape right. Now I can use my heat gun to finish this off. And you know, no matter how many times I do this technique, it always looks like magic. All right, now I can paint this up just like I did the base. Now I have a pair of 
five millimeter orange amber flickering LEDs. And these are going to go down in the bottom of the mine shaft, all the way down where they won't be visible. You'll just see the glow coming up. So it'll give the look of uh, you know, fire down below, as if the shaft goes all the way down to, well, you know where. So here's the bottom of the mine shaft. It'll come down from up here, straight down into here. And so I'm going to mount these LEDs in here now with some of that 3M industrial strength mounting tape. Any final blending or weathering of the mine could be done over here on the layout. In fact, probably be better that way. So I'm just going to go ahead and glue the whole thing right into place. Lines up with the mine shaft. Just finishing up the paint job on this little section of mine shaft. Wanted to add some um, some veins of ore running through here, so I use some uh, Vallejo silver metallic paint. Maybe it's mithril. Who knows? Maybe they delved too greedily in too deep, and that's why the town is cursed. Who knows? Just a little bit of uh, extra storytelling there. Now I'm adding some 8x8 eight eight timbers here and there. Make it look like uh, more like a mine than just a hole in the ground. Perhaps this was, you know, had some nice square set timbers at one time, but uh, it's all broken down now, so it's all kind of falling into ruin and disrepair. Okay, I think that's sufficiently terrifying. Let's go put it in the scene. Now I'm just going to blend these parts together with a small batch of sculpt mold and then I'll uh, paint it all to match. Well, it wouldn't be an old abandoned mine without some bats. And these are some little 3D printed guys from miniprints.com, highly recommended. I have uh, mounted them on some pins so I can put them here around the mine shaft like they're flying around. Just want to dab a glue on the end here. Just push that right back into the foam. And the final detail is going to be a skeleton, another skeleton, also from Mini Prince. And I've uh, rearranged his limbs so he can be uh, hanging on the rope up above the, uh, the open mine shaft. Right now I'm using some acrylic modeling paste to add some rags, ragged clothes to him. Just building it up in layers and then when it's all painted it'll look like he's got rags hanging off his bones. There we go. Now I'll do a dark wash over him to tie everything together and bring out the details. I'll put a little drop of CA on his hands. And he's gonna go right here. <laughs> oh, I love it when a plan comes together. <laughs>
And that's going to wrap it up for the Hell Dorado Mine here on the Gruesome Gulch layout. There's more coming from Gruesome Gulch, so don't forget to like, subscribe, share, hit that notification bell if you want to see more. You can also follow Thunder Mesa over on Instagram at thunder.mesa and see what's new on the Thunder Mesa Studio website at thundermesa.studio. And if you really like what we're doing here at the channel and want to show your support, you can head on over to patreon.com slash thundermesa, like these nice folks did, and show your support there. Until next time, keep moving forward, my friends. Adios for now.